This is such a fun time to be crafting. Merry Christmas from Crafty Hint. I want to thank each of you for watching today and hope that you'll subscribe and like this video. Let's get to DIY one. I have loved these white bells. I think the accents that they have on them at the Dollar Tree are already beautiful but I definitely wanted them to match my red and white decor um, for my bathroom door. So I took uh, the top off of that and now I'm just taking a piece of ribbon, looping it around and doing some glue here to make my bow. Next, as you've probably seen, I just take some snips off of my garland. So much cheaper than buying a bunch of picks. And from what I've seen at the Dollar Tree lately, mine hasn't had as many picks as they do in other years. So I just arrange them how I'd like them behind my bow. I put a zip strip there and wrap it around to the back and I'm gonna pull it now. I don't want it quite tight, but I want it to hold it. Now I'm taking some ribbon. This will be my hanger. And just going to tie a knot at the end. All right, pretty easy so far, right? We just grabbed a couple things from the Dollar Tree. If you have a garland and some ribbon, this is easy to do. If you don't have a garland and you're not doing much decorating, you could definitely grab a pick or two from Walmart, a craft store, or the Dollar Tree. And now I pull this just a little bit tighter, but I don't want it all the way tight. I want to be able to adjust my greenery and my bow. Now these bells had a tight little hole there, so I just opened it up a little bit. And now I strung my bow, my bells with some baker's twine and I made one shorter than the other. Now so that they'll hang properly, I will push one through here and then tie them together on the other end. Then I know that they will hang at the length that I'd like them to. If you wanted, you could add a little bit of antiquing to this. You could add, you know, a little bit of maybe brown paint or gray paint. There's several options, but I really think these bows are pretty. And that white and red and green, I'm just such a fan of these together. As you'll see through this video, those are my colors this video. All right, so I'm just fluffing this up. I'm trimming a little bit of my greenery. Whenever you have that, if, whether you use garland ties, like from the Dollar Tree, you can get a pack of those. That would work, but you want to just run your finger back and forth around that greenery so that it looks r more real and not so flat. And oops, that one kind of snuck out. So that's part of the reason we leave this a little bit loose so that we can adjust and get it the way we want. Now pull, uh, this is gonna be the tails of our bow. We pull that, now pull it through the center of that loop. And now we'll just tie it tight on the back so that we have the tails for our bow. This also helps hold all of your greenery in place, etc. All right, so now that that's there, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue here and I'm going to put this, I think it's a Rochester pine in there and just do that on each side because these are a little bit shorter. I wanted them in there, but, and now just dovetail those. So fold it in half and cut from the center out. So it's not a big fussy bow, it's a very simple one. I think it's kind of simple but elegant, right? So pretty.
I think Jingle Bells are so fun, so I hosted with Brenda this Jingle All The Way collab. Her channel is Rustic and Lace DIY. Down below, there will be a playlist of other wonderful DIYers, so please look at the playlist and also go subscribe to Brenda. You will not be let down that you did. She is an amazing DIYer and a wonderful friend. Oh, when I knew I was going to do a bell challenge, I grabbed bells in every size. As you can see, I have three different sizes here. And so I took one of these little cones that I got in, I think it was a four or a six pack from Hobby Lobby. I also found this bell garland at the Dollar Tree. Love that. It comes in red, gold, silver, and a multicolor. So I took the biggest bells and went around once, and now I'm adding those again. Of course, this isn't the biggest red bell they have. These were the three, well, four sizes that I grabbed. So I did two rows and I'm just staggering the bells in between on each row. That way all of the little gaps fell in and they line up well. So when I start the next row, I just started in between the others. That way we didn't have nice straight rows going straight up. I just thought that might look a little odd, especially with the different sizes. So just continue those going around. Um, again, I did two rows of that and then I moved on to the next size bell. You could do this all one size, whatever you think works. But this was how I thought it would be cute to kind of incorporate it. And as it tapers up, the bells get smaller. And here we are on that second size. They'd be pretty to do in different sizes or you know whatever your color scheme is you could do gold or silver oh this could be pretty in so many different ways i'm going to just add this one to my tear tray i thought that this would be pretty i have a tear tray that i've done in all red i don't know if you've seen that here i'll post um one of the videos here and i'll post the other one in just a moment as i do have two different videos on my winter slash christmas tier trays all right getting up towards the top we've gotten to that third size now i think we're on the fourth size and i just took it off this garland and am putting those around on this garland those bells every other bell is one it goes you can kind of see them um, one is smaller than the other, so they are actually two different sizes. So I guess we actually have five sizes here to be exact. So it was just fun. You could also put like a gold bell at the top or a silver bell to be maybe your star. So many different ideas. All right, this is just about finished here. Just trying to fill in any of those little gaps. That about does it. Isn't that pretty? And here it is on my tear tray. I found these gold bells at the Dollar Tree and just took off everything at the top there. And I went in with some white plaster chalk paint. And then I decided I want to take the rings off of the top of the bell also. So I just pulled that. It has a little clasp and then clipped it off also. Now I'm going in with some Waverly Mineral chalk paint and just going back over those poinsettia flowers. 
I think this gets in the cracks. I thought about antique wax, but thought it might be just a little bit too dark. So this gave it a little bit of the details and a little bit of a vintage look without it looking, you know, super dirty, which is what I was afraid the antique wax might kind of do to these. So I did kind of the same effect that you've seen me antique some things with wiping it on with a wet wipe and wiping it back off. So you can leave as much or as little as you'd like. And I just did that across all of the details. Now I just fed through some jute twine and now I'm putting a dab of glue on each side so that it will hang straight. And I just pulled that up. I'm sorry, it's just a little bit out of frame there. This was a little bit closer up than I think I planned on. All right, so a little bit of glue here just to hold that in place. And now what I'm going to do is take some jute twine and go around that top and just adhere it just a little bit. I start at the top of at the top of the top and just worked my way around it. So I have a Hallmark movie on, just sitting here crafting, watching some Christmas movies. I think it's fun. All I did now is just sit and twist this bell in circles and just needed a dab of glue here and there. And then of course at the end to secure it. And I did this for both bells. Now I decided these rings, I clipped off the little metal piece that went across on one side. And now I'm gonna glue the two together so it gives me, you know, a nice solid ring. So just a little bit of, right there, whenever I'm using my little white one, it's a lower temp glue gun. It, it doesn't say low temp, but it is not a high temp glue gun. So I like to use this one um, because it does not burn me like my others do. Now I just took some faux evergreen there and clipped one um, part of the branch in half and then trim down the other end so that it goes to each side there. And now just a little bit of berries to top that off. I love how the white and the green and the red come together. Oh, I think that's just beautiful. I love these colors together. And with the jute twine, it gives it that old effect like these have been passed down from generations. These would be really pretty in red also. I do hope if you've been enjoying this video that you'll give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hit that bell, it will notify you each time I upload a new video. So I took some of this Buffalo check ribbon and I cut it in half. I probably didn't have to cut it in half, but I didn't want it to be too bulky. So I'm just going to glue it here and wrap that ring. Pretty simple. And just keep on wrapping and just dab a little bit of glue here and there. I did put my finger protectors on there because I knew I'd be touching it an awful lot. I ended up taking them back off because I really didn't need them for this. It isn't true metal, so it was fine. Now I'm just tying a plain old bow and just making sure I have right sides facing out. Next, I'm taking both of these bells. Again, we have that jute twine just as long as we wanted it for these bells to hang. So now I'm going to line them up and tie a knot at the top, just making sure they will hang properly before I tie that knot. If you wanted, you can also paint the inside of the bell. I did not do that at this point. So I tied that in a knot. Now I'll tie it in another knot right around this ring, making sure it's secure and that they will hang right. Now a little bit of hot glue to attach the bow.
And I did just dovetail the ends of that bow. Isn't that pretty? Can you see the details there? I got these bells from the Dollar Tree and put them in some bleach concentrate and a little bit of water. I probably could have done less bleach and a little more water. You can see they're starting to break down. I left them for about a day and a half and that's what I got. So you can see the comparison there. They start to rust a little bit at the edges so you can remove them sooner or later that, you know, depending on what effect you're trying to get. I think I might have pulled them out a little bit sooner, but they turned out well, I think. Now, the metal going across here to hold your tie or ribbon is very thin, as you're going to see, and maybe the bleach made it a little brittle because it pops right about here. Oops! So all I did was lifted those up and tucked the ribbon in between it and tied a knot. It wasn't a huge deal. It was able to go right back under there. But you could definitely use some thinner ribbon. I just liked the old world country effect of this, a little vintage. So I ended up just pulling those up and tucking it under and then, like I said, tying it. Now, before you tie that all the way, I realized to get a hanger on there, what I want to do is I'm going to use some jute. I was trying to figure out what would look good to hang it. Let me know down below what you would use. So I just untied this, put a little bit of jute through there, and unfortunately, I didn't know my camera did not refocus. So I apologize, but basically I just had a loop of jute and I just tied it within that knot so that it could hang well. And here's how it turned out. Kind of an old antique look, nice vintage bells. Here is one more look. I do hope that you'll let me know which one is your favorite. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to visit the playlist and here's a couple other videos you might enjoy. Have a blessed day!